So far, this is all fairly straightforward, and this is very much what you might have done at GCSE, but we're thinking about the A-level physics now, and we don't just think about distance, we know about displacement, which can be positive or negative. We also have a velocity rather than speed, which again can be either a positive or a negative value. So what I'd like to do now is have a velocity time graph and also a displacement time graph. Here we have an example of a displacement time and a velocity time graph. Now one of the important differences is that uh, we've got displacement that can be positive or negative and here the unit is S for displacement measured in metres and we also have the velocity V measured in metres per second to the minus one and both of these values can be both positive and negative. So perhaps we have an example where an object maybe moves away, comes to a halt and then moves back to the starting position. So we can see at the end the total displacement is zero. So this might be a ball uh, moving up and down or it might be uh, something that goes away and then comes back again. Now in terms of the velocity, again the velocity time graph is a graph of the gradient of this. So for the first time we have a positive constant gradient which means you have a positive constant velocity. Here they're not moving anywhere so the velocity must be zero and I'm just going to draw that along this axis quite poorly as you can see. Um, the final part though they're coming back so that means they have a negative gradient which means they must have a negative velocity whereas before that was a positive value here it is zero and on the graph over here I said that the area is equal to the distance traveled so here we have a distance traveled which is positive here we've got a positive area and a negative area and what we should find is that the area of this part of the graph and this part sum up to zero so at the end the total distance travelled is zero metres. What's really important isn't so much your ability to plot your own graph with of some data, but it's about reading and interpreting another a graph that you've been given, perhaps as part of a bigger question, because you might need to know, uh, work out the gradient, you might need to work out the maximum acceleration. Here we have a policeman, and imagine his truncheon gets thrown in the air uh, rises to a certain height and then comes back down and he catches it again. What we can do is maybe look at the velocity of the object, uh, its displacement and also maybe the acceleration. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying that the upwards direction is positive. So plus V E for positive. And that means anything upwards is positive, anything downwards is negative. And if we know that that is falling under gravity for the entire time, the only thing that's stopping it going up and up and up into space is the fact that gravity is pulling it down, we might know that, uh, we, we will know that gravity acts downwards with a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. So this value here is equal to minus g, so this is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now this graph here is a tricky one, it's the acceleration time graph, something that you don't need to know, but what effectively it means is that the acceleration on that object is always downwards. Now because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity this also must mean that the velocity at some point must be zero. At the very top that truncheon is going to at some point go from having a positive value to a negative value. It's got the highest positive velocity at the very start and at the very end it has a negative value for velocity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that uh, during the course of its, uh, its motion, the velocity time graph looks like this. It has a constant negative gradient, which means the velocity is always getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And if we compare the velocity to the acceleration underneath it, this graph here is really a, a graph of that gradient. So this one here is then a graph of that gradient. So initially, uh, the gradient must be very steep. At some point the gradient must be zero and at some point there must be a, a steeply negative gradient. And if we join this up on the top graph we get something that looks a bit like that, some kind of parabola, not a circular path but a parabola, so a constantly changing gradient. And what we have here now are three graphs to show the displacement, velocity and acceleration graph for an object that's been thrown into the air and is coming back down again. Have a think about that, it does mess with your head a bit but eventually it will click and you think oh, of course it must be that. 
So this one here shows about the relationship between the displacement, velocity and acceleration time graphs. This you don't really need to know about at A-level, but it's a useful kind of extension of what you currently do know.